Hello and welcome to Lessons in Logos with Dr. Philip Marshall, Professor in Biblical Languages in the Department of Classics and Biblical Languages at Houston Baptist University. The Lessons in Logos video series is designed to help you make the most of Logos Bible software in your personal Bible study and in your academic research. So thank you for joining us. In this episode, episode three, we're going to continue and wrap up the training session in Logos 8 Basic that I started uh, in episode two. So if you haven't watched that first half, then I want to encourage you to go back to episode two and watch that uh, episode of Lessons in Logos before you watch this one, since you'll be coming midstream into a conversation I'm already having. As well, that prior video walks you through how to get your own personal uh, version of Logos 8 Basic, and that way you can get started on Logos Bible software today for free. So go do that right now if you haven't already, and if you already have, then just continue listening to episode three. So without further ado, here's the second half of my training session at Houston Baptist University in Logo State Basic. Enjoy. So now let's talk about this concept of linked scrolling. If you look at your handout, I mentioned linked scrolling. What is that? Linked scrolling is the ability to get your resources to follow one another as you scroll through one of them. When would you want to do that? Well, let's say you have two Bible versions open. Even though you don't have a Greek New Testament with your Logos 8 Basic, um, that would be an ideal sort of scenario for this, where you could have an English Bible open in one, um, in one tile, and then you could have your Greek New Testament open, say, on the left side in another tile. And then as you're working your way down the Greek text, the English Bible follows and uh, scrolls along with it. So let's learn how to do it. Now, you see my two Bibles here happen to both be in the same tile. And um, when they're in the same tile, you can only see one of them at the same time. What we want to do is get them side by side so that we can view them together. So let me clean this up just a little bit. And what we want to do is we want to drag one of the Bibles over into another tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, to grab one of these Bibles I'm going to do that by left-clicking on the name of the tab, and then I'm going to hold that left-click, uh, mouse-click down, and then drag it over to the left along the top. Do you see how it's magically sort of floating around here? What it's trying to do is to find a landing site. Logos intuitively tries to anticipate uh, where you want to cause this resource to land when you drag it over. So what's it doing here with this little grayed out area? It's basically uh, suggesting that maybe what I want to do is drop this uh, on, onto this tile uh, and to create a separate tile, uh, basically splitting this top left tile in half. If I go over to the left a little bit more, it can fill up the whole tile and then it becomes one resource inside that tile. I can drop down lower and try to create two tiles out of one. There's just a number of ways to do this. Or if I know exactly what set of tiles or what tile I want to drop it into, then I can just pull it up and uh, you'll see where the orange is. Uh, that's where if I release it, it's going to drop it and make it uh, one resource inside that tile. And now it's there. Let's make a little room. Now, how do we get these two uh, English Bible texts to scroll together? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the panel menu, which is the three dots on the right side of your panel window, and you're going to click a letter under the word link set. Now, I've already clicked A here, so maybe you want to click A on yours. So go ahead and do that right now. Then go over to the other resources, the, the other resource that you'd like to have scrolling along with this one. In this case, the King James, click the three dots for the panel uh, resource panel menu. And then you're going to click the same letter that you clicked for the other one, in this case, A. Now they're both the letter A on the link set. And whenever you move one of those, the other one will follow along with it. Moving through Matthew 22 and 1 causes it to move on the other side as well. If I decide to go to a completely different chapter in the Bible, let's say John chapter 1, then I can type that in, click enter, 
And then not only will that one go to John 1, but the other side will go with it. Isn't that helpful? Let's go ahead and connect another resource to the link set so that it scrolls along with it. Let's take a look at the Faith Life Study Bible, for example, down below. Let me just make a little bit more space for us to see more of uh, what we need to here. Now click the three dots of the panel menu and click the letter A for your link set to tie it to the other two. And now all three of these resources will scroll together. So as I uh, move my Bible to John uh, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, 10, you'll notice that the Faith Life Study Bible study notes likewise go to John 1, 10. Now, if you had a commentary open, you could do the same thing. So let's go ahead and open a commentary. Let's go back to our library here, and we could type in the word commentary and uh, do a search for commentary you should find that in your package of Logos 8 Basic, there is a whole Bible commentary called the Commentary Critical and Explanatory on the Whole Bible. This is by Jamie Fawcett Brown. In order to open the resource, you need to click on the title of it, and it's going to open it there in, in a little panel below. What's great is that Logos assumes that when you open a commentary, uh, it anticipates that the reason you're opening it is because it's relevant to what you're studying now. So notice that it opened to John 1.10. That's pretty cool, right? But notice that as I start to scroll down the King James Bible, the commentary is not moving along with it. Now, why is that? Well, because they're not linked yet. That's why. So if I want it to scroll together, I click the panel menu, three dots, click A for the link set, and now... Uh, whenever I move the King James Bible, the commentary will go with it. So this is a very useful feature of Logos, to be able to link your scrolling together and to, uh, to have it follow, have these texts follow one another. Very helpful. Now, if you ever want to unlink a resource so that they don't scroll together, then click the, the three dots for the panel menu, and then you can either click None next to Link Set or Clear All Links. Now, let's talk about English Bible searching. Let's say you want to do some searching in the Bible. How do you do that? This is on page two of your handout at Roman numeral four. Let's say you want to search for all occurrences of an English word in the Bible. Back in the olden days, if you wanted to find all of the occurrences of an English word in an English Bible, you would reach on the shelf for a hefty tome known as a concordance. That was a thick, thick book with lists and lists of words in English. It could take you several minutes just to find the words you're looking for, and then a much longer time even to copy down all the references for those occurrences. Logos makes this process almost instantaneous. It's so easy, I almost feel guilty telling you about it. So how do you do it? There's several ways to do it. I'm going to show you one way here. Go to the top. You've got three major menus here, Docs, Guides, and Tools, and you want to click on the Tools menu. And from there, click on the word Search. You see the little search icon. Click on that. Once you do, it's going to pull up a search window for you. Uh, mine shows up here on the top left. I'm not sure where yours is located when it pulls it up but mine's here. Now, what you're going to want to do is this. In the top left-hand corner, there's four options. Make sure that you click on the word Bible. Click on the word Bible there. You see Morph over here is already um, selected. We don't want that. What Morph does is it allows you to search on different forms of a Greek word. Let's say, for example, you wanted to find all the genitive case forms of the Greek word theos, God. The morphology search is what you're going to use for that. That's not what we're doing here. What we're trying to do is find out every time a particular English word in a particular English Bible occurs. So we need to click on Bible, not morph. Now, once you do that, you're going to find three options here next to the word search. These lay out parameters for your search. Now, the first thing here is top Bibles. 
This is a designation that Logos uh, gives you where you can choose to prioritize certain English Bibles as your top Bibles, and then you can search in those top Bibles for things. For our purposes, we actually want to search for occurrences in a particular English Bible, let's say the Lexham English Bible. So click on top, uh, top Bibles and then select the one you want. Let's do Lexham English Bible here. Now to the left, it says all passages, and that means that if you leave all passages here, it's going to do the search for everything from Genesis to Revelation, the whole Bible. But you could also narrow your search down to a subset of the whole Bible. So maybe you'd want to just look for English uh, word occurrences in the Torah or maybe the major prophets. So let's click on it, and you'll notice that there are some preset divisions there for you to choose from. And you can also type in your own range up in the box. For now, let's keep it at all passages. The last thing is all Bible text, and we really want to leave it there because what we're actually doing is we want to search in all the words in, that make up the text of the Bible for the occurrences we're seeking. Logos does allow you to search for other things besides the Bible text, so things like headings and footnotes and stuff like that. That's not what we're wanting to look for here, though. So if you did click all Bible text, it would give you some uh, other options of the sorts of things you could search through for uh, word occurrences besides the actual text of the Bible. Again, we're not going to bother with doing that here. Uh, so go to the search bar and let's click uh, or type in a search term. So what term shall we uh, enter here? Uh, let's do resurrection. Resurrection. So we're going to try to find all occurrences of the word resurrection in the Lexham English Bible. Sometimes the search term you're looking for populates automatically down below, and then you can click on it, but I'm just going to click this arrow to execute the search here. So let's click that arrow, and while it's uh, populating the results, let's drag this down to make a little bit more room. Now, we're going to skip the part that says fuzzy Bible search. Logos has some algorithms that they use where if somebody's trying to find a passage and they can't remember exactly all the words, if they punch in several search terms, Logos will try to locate that verse for them. Uh, we're not doing fuzzy Bible search here. We're trying to find specifically and exactly when a, when a word is used and, and, and where it's used. So we want to go to the, to the next part. Here we see 43 results. So here we have precise results, all 43 occurrences of the English word resurrection in the English Bible known as the Lexham English Bible. Now, what do you notice here as you look at the results? Notice that the word resurrection occupies a middle position uh, in the, 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 the tab here, right? This is one of four ways to view your search results. The four ways to view your results are grid, versus, aligned, and analysis. So let's see what happens when we look at uh, the, the, the results under grid. Click that. When it shows me the results, I see the passage on the left. The name of the uh, LEB, Lexham English Bible uh, version, is uh, there. And, and, and then I, I get to see some context for the verse and uh, in yellow highlighting, all the search terms are found, but they're sort of spread out. On the other hand, if I click Verses, that second layout, then I get to see the entire verse uh, for, for each passage, so I get to see more of the context. If I go to the Aligned view, uh, I do get to see some of the context, as we saw, we already saw this, uh, but the, the search term occupies the central position of the window. I find this layout helpful, especially when I'm looking for Greek words, because then I'm often searching for all the forms of a Greek word, and I can see all those forms all at once in a glance. And finally, analysis. Takes a little bit of time for that to pull up, but uh, the reason is it's giving you uh, all sorts of parsing and grammatical information. You'll see things like the name of the resource, the reference, the previous word, and the word after the search term the Greek form of the word, the Strong's number. You'll see the Loanida lexicon number, the root, the part of speech, the case, 
the gender, the number, uh, all sorts of, of, of intense grammatical information. I don't honestly um, find the analysis uh, view very helpful. For me, it's usually the aligned view or the versus view. Now, if you want to, you can actually set this up to view uh, more than one Bible version at a time whenever you get your verses uh, view up. All you have to do is click Add Versions, and it's going to open up a, a little bar there for you to add another Bible version. So we could add, for example, the King James Bible here, and then uh, when we do, we'll be able to see the LEB and the KJV together uh, at the same time. Okay, so let's talk about searching Greek terms now. One of the problems with Logos 8 Basic is that you don't get an actual Greek New Testament as part of your package. Does that mean that Logos can't help you with Greek work? Absolutely not. So let's talk about how we can do this. Now, Logos has designed uh, resources uh, of the sort called a reverse interlinear. What's a reverse interlinear? Well, let's think about a regular interlinear. A regular interlinear gives you the Greek text up at the top and then puts below the Greek text English words, English glosses, parsing information, that sort of thing. A reverse interlinear does the opposite. It starts with the English Bible text on the top and then places underneath the English text your Greek words, the uh, lexical forms, um, maybe the actual Greek text, and then the lexical form and parsing information. Now let's pull the Lexham English Bible over to the right and make a little bit more space here. This English Bible is one that, Lex, that, that Logos has, uh, has created for, for its Bible software. It has a reverse interlinear built into it. To see the reverse interlinear, click the Alpha and Omega symbol you now see the reverse interlinear information along the bottom in the panel. Now let's say you're in John 2, and you see the word servants here. Even though I only have an English Bible open, if I left-click on the word servants, you're going to see down at the bottom that uh, the Greek word for servants is going to be highlighted in blue. Now I can see the Greek text that lies behind the English. You see that uh, there is the, uh, the Greek word in Greek, uh, a Greek transliteration, uh, then the lexical form. That, this is described as the lemma in, in logo speak. The lemma is the lexical form. And then you'll see some parsing information. So if you mouse over, it'll tell you this is a noun and it's dative plural masculine in its form. So that's one way to access the Greek information. Another way is to change the view. Now, uh, go to the Alpha Omega and pull that down arrow there. You see how we have checked reverse interlinear pane. That's what you're seeing in that little ribbon down at the bottom. But if we uncheck that, it's going to disappear. Then to get a traditional interlinear, click the top line where it says inline reverse interlinear. Now you're going to see the traditional English text and the Greek text right below it. The parsing information will be right below that, but this will allow you to actually put your eyes on the Greek text in, in the right sequence. So those are the two ways to see the great Greek text, either inline or down in a panel below. Now let's toggle off the interlinear. You can toggle the interlinear information on and off just by clicking the alpha omega. So let's go back to the word servants and think about that for just a minute. You know that there are a, a few ways in Greek to uh, express servant. Uh, there's more than one word for servant. So which Greek word is this that lies behind the English? Put your mouse over the word servants and right click. This is going to pull up a couple of options. If you're interested in searching the English word servants, then you could click on the word selection servants there at the top. But that's not our interest here. We want to know about the Greek behind the word servants. What do we learn? Well, we learned that this is not the Greek word pais, which is one word for servant, but the Greek word diakonos, and we see that uh, there. Now, do you see that little square root symbol? 
don't click on that. That's not very helpful because this is how you do a search on the root of a word. But we don't want to search for the root of a word. We want to search for the lexical form. The lexical form is the lemma. That's the one with the circle there. We want to click on that. It's usually pre-selected, but if it's not, click on it. And then on the right side, there are options for searching based on that selection. Now, I could look for all occurrences of the Akinos, no matter what case, gender, and number they are. To do that, just click the word Bible for that kind of search, and it's going to pull up all the results of the Akinos in all forms. So my search results on the left are going to give me every occurrence. It'll be give me the English Bible, because that's all I have, but behind the, those English uses will be uh, every single uh, occurrence of the Greek word diakonos in all forms. Now let's go back and right-click again on servants, and now I can search on this word in terms of its morphological form. You see how it says diakonos at ndpm? That is parsing information, so I'm going to click on that, and it's now going to give me the search results for that particular form of diakonos. Dative plural masculine. Now, when you go to this window, notice, like I told you before, morph is chosen. This is how you search for specific forms of a Greek word. Notice that it's using the Lexham English Bible here, and all passages are, are searched, but, uh, but all morphological text is also uh, uh, active here. And that means that all text that is tagged with morphological information, information like case, gender, number, uh, tense, voice, mood, if it's verbs. Clicking on the search bar will pull down options to specify what you want to search for. Now, this search was preset to noun, dative, plural, masculine, because that's what the word servants was when I performed the search on it in the text. But if I wanted to change to the accusative dative, plural, masculine, then I could click on dative to unselect it and then select accusative. I could click on a plural to unchoose it, click singular, and, um, you know, just uh, change my search parameters. So now I have noun, accusative, singular, masculine. Now let's just click the arrow and execute the search and pull up the results. This gives us only one result of that form of diakonos. So you, you can really search for anything you want on any word you want. We looked here for a noun, but let's say you want to search for a particular verb. Let's say, for example, you want to do a search on the word tasted down in verse 9. So what kind of click do I want to make? Right click, see the options it pulls up, and make sure that the lemma, guamai, is uh, highlighted here. It usually is already highlighted for you. And then go to the right and click Guamai with its morphological information. It's going to pull up all results of Guamai as a verb in the aorist, middle, indicative, third singular. We have one search result for that particular form of Guamai. Now click the search bar to pull down more options. Now let's say if instead of searching on the aorist middle, let's choose more tenses like future, imperfect, pluperfect, present, and perfect. And let's click all the voice options, active, middle, and passive. You see how it's filling in uh, everything on those particular uh, parameters of tense and voice. And let's add uh, to indicative, imperative, and infinitive. And then I can add first and second person as well as third person and uh, plural and singular. And let's execute the search and notice that adding all those options only increases my hits by two more. So not expansive, but just click on a passage and it'll pull it up for you to the right. And you can see the text. Now notice that tasted over here is highlighted because tasted is an active search result from your search, uh, from your search screen. Notice also servants is highlighted. Why is that? Because servants is also an active search result in a different search window. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, this just gives you uh, some basic and, and introductory information to get you started on using Logos Bible Software, Logos 8 Basic, uh, for your particular uh, study and research 
uh, here at Houston Baptist University. So thanks so much for your time. I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have and help you along. Well, that concludes our recorded session of training in Logos 8 Basic. I do want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Lessons in Logos. Once again, if you'd like to be notified every time I release new content, including new Lessons in Logos videos, then please subscribe to this YouTube channel using the subscribe button and subscribe to my biblicallanguages.net website. I'd also encourage you to follow the HBU Classics and Biblical Languages Department on our social media platforms. There we'll always announce new additions of Lessons in Logos, as well as the other things that Professor Tim Brickens and I are working on at HBU. And if you're interested in studying biblical languages, classics, or Bible and theology, or apologetics for that matter, please check out HBU at the website at the end of this video. We'd love to have you join us in the great city of Houston, Texas. Until then, I'm Philip Marshall, wishing you every blessing as, together like Ezra, we set our hearts to study, do, and teach God's Word.